You are listening to an Elam International Church podcast. Right now, we're going to hear another powerful Sunday message. And our prayer is that you are encouraged and empowered to love God, love people, and make disciples no matter where you are. Well, good morning, church. How's everyone doing today? So good. Come on, I think you could do better than that. How's everyone doing today? Good. All right. Well, I have come here very excited you know, believing that God is going to do something amongst us over the next few minutes as we study the Word, as we listen to the Word. And what I'm going to ask every single person here is to lean in, to be expectant, just like I'm expectant, and to believe for miracles to happen. For that person who has walked into our service or that person who has joined us online or probably going to watch this message later on, and if they're, they've showed up here and they, deep down, they're like, God, I've come here. I need a miracle. You know what's happening in my life. And we're going to believe for those people here this morning that they're going to get their miracle, get their breakthrough, that today is the day of breakthrough. Can we all believe that? this morning? Amen. So last Sunday, we began a series called Breaking the Limits. And this morning, as I start out the message, I want everyone to take a second right now and to answer this question. You'll see the question on the screen. It's on your sermon notes, if you're in paper format or if you're on the app. The question is, what is that one thing that's limiting you from all that God has called you to be? What would you say is your limitation? Right, And I want you to take a pen if you've got a sermon note. The host team can help you if you need it. And I want you to write that down. And the reason why I'm asking us to put that down is because in a few minutes, we're going to come back to it. And I want you to be ready for that moment. I believe there is some untapped potential, God-given potential in every single person here. You know, and God wants us to do a big thing in and through our lives. So this morning, we're going to look at how God's strength was displayed in the life of a deliverer named Gideon. Gideon probably lived around 12th century BC, and, you know, his story is seen and can be read throughout the book of Judges, chapters 6 to 8. So God had called Gideon to be a judge during a time of turmoil for the country of Israel. So they were under the oppression of the Midianites and everything that they owned, you know, their homes, their livestock, their sheep, donkey, everything that was alive, that was moving, was captured and was dead. And so here he is, and you know, you could pretty much say that Israel was at the end of their ropes and all hope was gone. Now, Israel's main problem was they forgot about God. They counted God out. You know, they did cry out to God when they needed help and all of that, but they just didn't believe that. Would God actually come through? There was a little bit of doubt every single time. They didn't expect that God would actually show up. And so here we meet Gideon, whose name actually means he who cuts down. And then we will see this morning how God's strength was displayed through this man who is doubtful in his very existence. But God's strength was displayed through this man. And he delivered this country and cut down the enemies of God's people. So I've titled my message this morning, It's Time to Take the Limits Off. Let's pray. God, we come at this time to you, God, and as we just study this word this morning, we ask that you'll speak to us. Let every word spoken just not be words, but let the words carry breakthrough into this atmosphere. God, we know that you are a God of miracles, and we thank you in advance for what you're going to do amongst us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so the account of Gideon begins in Judges chapter 6, and so we're going to turn our attention there, but I'm just going to do a quick summary of the first 10 verses. So what has happened is Israel, you know, God had saved Israel, brought them out of slavery, brought them out of Egypt, and he has put them in their promised land. And then he says, I am the Lord your God, right? But in verse 10, we see that even though God had said that to them, the Israelites had gone and started worshiping the gods of the Amorites. They had turned away from God. So the current status of this country, everyone who belonged to this country were hiding, right? They were hiding. They, were, they had built homes in mountain clefts. They were sitting in caves. They were sitting in hulls just to stay away. Nobody wanted to be seen. And similarly, Gideon was doing the same thing. So let's look at verse 11. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah that belonged to Joash, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat. 
in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Now, verse 15, pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike, strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Again, Gideon replies, if now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it's really you who is talking to me. From the outset, we see Gideon depicted to be a man whose fear was greater than his faith. And the same was true for all of his countrymen who were hiding. And you know, here they were hiding for about seven years, and they finally decide to call out to God for help. And so, how did, where was Gideon when, you know, the angel came? He was at the wine press. He was hiding. And he was doing a task that he normally does, which was threshing the wheat. But from what I understand, this process happens on the mountaintop, on the hilltop, because as you, like, thresh the wheat, the wind will blow away the chaff, and then, you know, your job is done right? But here he was hiding. And suddenly we see this angel appear. And you know, in the Old Testament, it was really common for God to just show up, right? Even there was no doors, God just showed up. And so Gideon, Gideon was probably used to that. He would have heard stories of, yep, all right, here you go, God just showed up. But what probably would have stood out to him was that like, my hiding place has been discovered. Here I was trying to be by myself, just secluded. You know, I'm just going to stay here. If I'm minding my own business, nobody is going to come find me. But God found him out. But even more than that was the greeting. The way the angel came to him and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. You see, when God was calling Gideon out as a mighty warrior, he was not referring to the current circumstances or the limitations or the opinions that Gideon had of himself or what his friends thought about him, what his family thought about him. But when God was calling him out as a mighty warrior, he was talking about what he's about to become. He was talking about what would happen to him when the strength of God falls on him and what he was about to achieve. And you know, the conversation here reveals to us what Gideon thought about himself. You know, he was actually not limited by the oppression of the Midianites, but he was limited by what he actually thought about himself. You know, you could say that Gideon had a loser's mentality. These are people who walk around saying, you know what, I will amount to nothing. You know, I've got nothing. You know, even if I try to do something, nothing's going to happen, so might as well not do anything. And they just sit there. You know, and just don't step out. But can I remind you, friend, that it is not what people believe about you that matters, but what you believe about yourself and what God believes about you is what matters. So this morning, today, is going to be the day that many of us are going to stop labeling ourselves negatively. Today, before the end of the service, a lot of us here, we're going to peel that label off. The label that we have put on ourselves or the label that we have allowed somebody to put on ourselves, even without our permission. So today is the day. We see a similar situation in Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. You know, God had given uh, Moses the promised land. And so Moses, I think he was trying to do some logistical stuff and administrative stuff. And he wanted to send some spies to make sure everything was ready. And so he sends these 10 spies out. And you know, what did they come and say? In verse 33, they came and gave this description of that they looked like grasshoppers. And, you know, in the sight of these people. For a moment, they forgot that they were God's chosen people. You know, they forgot in that instant that, you know what, all the miracles that God had done for them just was gone. Yeah. You know, no matter how small, settled, weak we feel right now, can I tell you the story of Gideon teaches us that God does not see the way we see ourselves. And all we have to do is to be willing to go in the strength that we have and believe that God will just show up and do the rest. Why do I say that? God specializes in doing what others believe cannot be done. 
So this morning, I'm going to share five simple ways. And as I go through them, you're going to be so surprised because they're so practical because these are five ways we can take the limits off that we have placed on our life. The first one is build a strong relationship with God. God could talk to Gideon the way he did because there was a relationship between them. Gideon was a seed of Abraham, and he had a covenant relationship with God. Ephesians 3.20 says this, Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. I'm going to break this verse down into three parts, all right? The first one is this. What does his mighty power at work within us mean? It means it's a partnership. We are in a partnership with God, and our part is really simple. We just need to show up with the strength that we have and expect God and allow God to do what he can in his mighty power. What does accomplish mean? It means that something will actually get done. It's a sure deal when we are in a partnership with God, when we trust in God's power. It's a sure deal that God is going to show up for us. Infinitely more. How much can God accomplish in your life? It's infinite. You know, we, don't, we can't even sit and think and imagine and process. Before even we start to think, it's done. You know, the Lord could have punished Gideon for the amount of times he interrupted him and said, pardon me, my Lord. Are you sure you're actually talking to the right person? You know, but he didn't do that because God knew that nobody in Israel could fulfill the call, the purpose that he had called this particular man to do. Amen. And God could see what Gideon was about to become. Too often we look at our circumstances and we say, que sera, sera. My English teacher used to sing that song. It meant whatever will be, will be. You all remember that song? But when we do that, no matter what life throws at us, no matter what season we might be in, that it might feel scary and stuff. But what we do is if we just hold back and we're like, okay, you know what, I'm just not going to deal with it. Our life becomes really uninspiring. Because suddenly, our biggest goal in life is to stay safe. You matter to Jesus. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was just thinking about this particular situation that never seemed to end. It's been years, and it keeps going and going and going. There's so many people praying for it, but there's no breakthrough. There's so many prophetic words, but there's no breakthrough. And so I'm actually, I think I was actually having a conversation with God. I was kind of like thinking about my message and stuff. And I said, what is the point of praying? What is the point? Like, you know, this is just wasting my time. Because you're not showing up. It's actually gone from okay to worse. And I ended the conversation and I walked off. And I have conversations like in the bus and stuff. I don't talk to anybody. If you see me in town, I'm usually not talking to people because I'm just like, like there, you know. And, um, but a couple of days after that, I suddenly had a craving for Arabic cookies, okay, Middle Eastern cookies. If you thought Tim Tams were great, you need to eat this stuff. You know, it's made with clarified butter. Some of these cookies are stuffed with like date paste, walnuts, right? The shortbread, the Arabic shortbread, it's got a pistachio on top. Some is covered in sesame seeds, like the whole front row is salivating right now. But it tastes so good with a cup of coffee or tea, right? So I had this thought with myself. Like, I have food thoughts a lot. And I went about my day. I didn't tell my husband because he would remind me I'm going to the gym every day, right? So I just kind of like went off. But last Sunday, I showed up at church, and I sat in the second row right there, right behind Tony. Pastor Boyd started this message series on breaking the limits, I was paying careful attention because I was rostered to preach today. I went out after the service. I'm standing by the heater. And I was talking to Susan Gill. And, you know, we were trying to, like, leave the building. When somebody in our church passed me and said, wait here, I've got something to give you. And I was just like, what did I, you know, what does she have to give me? Kingsley was thinking maybe I bought something from Marketplace. And um, A couple of minutes goes by, she walks in and hands me this little plate. And on that plate was Arabic cookies. And I remember thinking at that moment, even though I showed so much gratitude to that lady saying, you know, this is my favorite thing. I realized that if God could pay attention to my thoughts that I had with myself, how much more the conversation I would have had with him, telling him, what's the point in talking to you? 
because you're not going to show up, are you? Would have mattered to him. You know, when our heart is full of doubt and you feel like your faith meter is on zero, that's when we need to lean in. That's when we need to say, God, I'm going to build a stronger relationship with you. I'm going to lean in. I'm going to be expected. Now is not the time because we need to go with the faith that God is going to work it out. Number two, modify your beliefs. Our beliefs create our reality. Do you ever find yourself thinking that, you know what, they don't want me here. I can't apply for this job because I don't qualify. If I try something new, I'll probably fail, so I might as well just save myself some time. Or maybe you've caught yourself pretending to be somebody else because you think that if people get to know who you are, they will get afraid. But when we read the Bible, we'll see all through the scriptures that God did not design us to be small. So if you are struggling to shift the way you think about yourself, can I give you a quick tip? Check out who you're hanging out with. Because there are two groups of people. One group are firefighters. The other group are fire lighters. And if you hang out with firefighters, they're going to quench your vision. But if your friends are fire lighters, they're going to run with you. They're going to push you into the purpose, into the call that God has placed in your life. As we move along to Judges chapter 7, we see that, you know, Gideon and his army have gathered. They are ready. But God looks at Gideon and said, man, you've gathered a huge army. If I let you guys go and fight right now, you, and you win, you're going to boast about the strength that you have. But in this situation, I want to show who I am. So God tells him to downsize, and he says in verse 3, Whoever is timid or afraid may leave the mountain and go home. And as a result, 22,000 people left. There were 22,000 men, boys, women, I don't know. But, you know, they were like, oh, yeah, I look muscular and fit and all of that on the outside. But I am a chicken on the inside. And they walked away. But still God looked and said, nope, 10,000 is too much. And, you know, God helps Gideon to get that number down to 300 people. That night, in verse 9, it's time to go. And you know what God told? The war had not even begun. The verse says this, I have given you victory over them. The war hadn't begun. They haven't even stepped out. But God was telling him, because I'm in this with you, I can tell you right now, I'm giving you the victory over whatever you might be facing. It certainly took Gideon a little bit of time to modify the way he believed in God to understand what exactly God was about to do. 1 Corinthians 2.12 puts it well, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit, bitches of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. I remember when I faced my first life situation. I was about 18 years old. And it was a bit serious, you know, everything feels big when you're younger. And it was, I was really, um, um, I was feeling defeated, intimidated, you know, like, it was just like things were just not working out. At that time, my dad came and handed this book to me. And when I looked at the book, it look, looked really old, like the white pages had already turned brown. It was that old. Now, the title of the book was this, When Life is Not Fair, God is Good. And the book was written by uh, Robert Schuller the founder of Crystal Cathedral in California. Now, the challenge that I faced was I, you know, was going to study in this university but the, in the States, but the American embassy thought I was not fit enough or some, it was just a very weird excuse that made no sense because I had all the paperwork they needed. And so my dad gives it to me and like any young person would do and look at their parents, I said, and what is this going to do for me? <laughs> right, in a kind way, I'm making it nice. My dad was very patient. And he said, just read it, and then tell me what you think, right? I opened the book because I'm an obedient child. By page two, I think, I read that Robert Schuller went to the same university that I had just applied to and had got admission in but had, was declined, right? And I, so I read this book, and you know, I can tell you this. It's been years, all right? Many, 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 many years. I added it up. I'm, I'm not going to tell you the number because I suddenly felt really old. But here I am as a mature adult, as a parent, until this very day when life throws stuff at me, and I don't even, I don't even open my mouth to say it. In, deep down, the first thing that I tell myself, this is just not right. It just doesn't feel good. But God is still good to me. That one little moment when I was 18 has modified my belief system no matter what happens right till this very day. 
Number three, expect to win. Did you know that our expectations set the limits for our possibility? Sadly, we live in a world where everybody doesn't have the same expectation to win. I heard this the other day. Blessed are they that don't. Blessed are they who don't expect to win, for they shall not be disappointed. But did you know the Bible says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So can I encourage you this morning to disregard your limits? You know, it's time that we move from giving ourselves reasons of why we cannot do this and why we can't do that to moving to, you know what, I can do this. You know, we need to develop all things are possible to a Jesus mindset. You know, we need to know that we are a winner. We've got what it takes, no matter what the circumstances are putting you know, us in. Matthew 19, 26, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. We don't just need to dream big. But we need to start dreaming limitless dreams because of who we worship. Church, why don't you say this after me? I've got what it takes to win. I think we can do better. Find a neighbor. I think you need to tell this out loud. You need to internalize this and externalize this and say, hey, friend, I've got what it takes to win. And you tell them and remind them, you've got what it takes. That could be song lyrics, yes. <laughs> Sometimes we need to vocalize certain things so it registers on the inside of us, right? So moving on from number three is number four. Ask the help of the Holy Spirit in everything you do. You need to know right now, no matter what you're walking through in this current season of life, in this current phase of life, that you are not walking alone but that Jesus is walking with you and the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of you. Philippians 2.13, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. You know, we need to believe, just not read, that we can do all things to Christ Jesus who strengthens us. You know, when we look at Gideon's life, God's response to Gideon for all of the doubts was these five simple words. And I encourage you to write this down. I will be with you. Going with the strength that we have and stepping out means just this one thing, that we are aware of all of our flaws. We are aware of all of our fears, our abilities, or maybe the lack of abilities for some of us. But we are still choosing to move ahead, to move forward, because we are trusting God that is, God, God is going to show up. And we're trusting God to fill in the rest. How many of you believe that? And finally, number five, change your confession about yourself. I love this quote by Dr. Mike Murdoch. He said this, your mind needs constant conversation, instruction. Your mind needs constant instruction. God gave you your mouth to give your mind instruction. You know, our mind daily, especially in the times that we're living in, needs constant conversation. And our role is to prophesy positively into our day. You know, when we wake up tomorrow, you're going to say, I am a mighty man of God. Yeah. You know, you look at yourself in the mirror of women putting your mascara on, I am a mighty woman of valor. You know, I am not a grasshopper, yeah. but God has called me to be a giant killer. Right. You know, I've got what it takes to win because of the God I worship today. You know, I am not limited by the circumstances I'm in today. It sounds good, but you know what? I'm adding the faith factor to it. We're just not saying something positive, but we are prophesying with, you know, with the faith that we have. Proverbs 18.21, the tongue has the power of life and death. Do you know your words shape your destiny? You know, when we begin to speak in alignment with God's word, do you know what happens? Do you know what happens? It releases God's supernatural power to work in our lives. So right now, I want to look back I want everybody to look back at the question I asked this morning. What is that one thing that's holding you back today? What would you say is your limitation? And the reason why I ask you this, and some of you would have written one, maybe you have written none because you're like, where do I start? Maybe you've written three or four, but it doesn't matter. Right now, in this moment, what we're going to do is we're going to trade it with our limitless God. You know, because we're just not going to walk away. And some of you, you're just going to maybe possibly even rip that part of your sermon note. You can grab another one later on. And we're going to shred that piece of paper. 
You know, because if God could take a doubter like Gideon, a guy who is hiding in a wine press, you know, he, he didn't want to be exposed because he was so afraid. But you know what God did? Because Gideon allowed God's strength to work through him, Gideon ended up becoming a powerful, a self-assured, a successful man that thousands of years later, we are learning about him today. And you know what? I believe that God wants to do that, the very same thing with every single person listening right now, whether we're in the room, online, we're in the nursery. It doesn't matter where we are. You know, God wants to move in and through our lives. So if you're ready with me right now, I want you to get up on your feet. Grab that limitation you've written down, your phone, whatever. Don't throw your phone, okay? Right? I was just talking about shredding paper, but do not throw the phone. The iPhone 16, what Pro Max is not that great. So hold on to your limitation because I believe this morning that God wants to make all grace abound to us. You know, God is ready to shift us if we are ready to step out with the strength and the confidence that we have. You know, so in this morning, God is telling every single person here, it's time to take the limits off. And we're going to speak life this morning. We're just not going to say fluffy, positive words, but we're going to speak life. We're going to prophesy into it. And you know, some parents in this room, if your kids are not here, you're going to prophesy into their lives. You're going to prophesy good stuff into, you, into their future. So if you're ready with me, right now. Come on, let's pray. God, we just come to you right now and we ask that you'll help us to lead strong lives of faith, to carry out the purpose and the call that you have placed on our lives. We declare right now that we're moving from a weak place. Oh God, we're moving from a dejected, frustrated situation and we're moving into a place of confidence. We're moving into a place of courage. We're moving into a place of faith. Oh God, we're choosing right now to not settle where we are, but we're believing, Father, God, that you are moving us from the back bench to the front row. Oh God, we declare right now in the mighty name of Jesus, we are peeling off every label that we have put on ourselves. Oh God, we peel off every negativity right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say we are free. We've been set free by the power of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus, God. God, we declare this freedom in this atmosphere. God, we're stepping out of the shadows of doubt. Oh God, of fear, of child childhood trauma right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we're stepping out of our failure, of the feelings of defeat, oh God. And we, God, we know that as we place our faith in You, that You are going to open doors of breakthrough. Come on, church. I want us to declare this right now out loud. And I'm going to say something. I want you to repeat it after me in faith. I declare, I declare that the anointing of God, the anointing of God is, upon my life, is upon my life. And I cannot fail because God is with me. So I say to my limitations so right I now to my limitations right that now, you are not welcome in my life anymore. I say, I say that I am free. I am Come free. on, repeat it. I am free. I am free. My family is free. My, My is free. children are free. Children God, we are free, free to step to what you called us. Come on, let's, let's right now take a moment to declare that into our lives. Thank you for joining us for an Elam International Church podcast. To hear more messages like this, make sure you check out below. Or well, for more details, you can find us at www dot elaminternational dot org dot